Ryan. And I'm Dylan. And welcome back to our third annual Ring Series Halloween bonus episode. Uh, and yeah. on this one, we are looking at the book Loop, the third and final book in the original Ring trilogy by Koji Suzuki. Um, and for the movie that we're looking at this time, we're looking at Rings. Of, from 2017, Rings I believe. Plural. Yep. Because there is no direct loop mm -hmm. adaptation to a movie, so we picked um, Rings, which has no direct book that it is made from. So yeah, <laughs> we just kind of picked two that are by themselves. Yeah. So this is one is a little bit unusual, but yeah. uh, let's talk about the journey we took to get here and why we are here. Uh, we started by reading. Ring by Koji Suzuki. This is the first book from 1991, published in Japan. And this one was turned into an American, well, a Japanese horror movie first. Mm -hmm. And then the Japanese horror movie was adapted for an American horror movie. Um, so we did this as a bonus episode off of our series Adaptation Station uh, because it's book to movie adaptations, but we both saw the American movie first. Yeah, the American yeah. movie first, but then you watched the Japanese movie before reading the book, and I read the book before watching the Japanese one. I think that's how we did the first episode. Uh, yeah, that yes, that is, that sounds right. That yeah. sounds right. I remember reading the book second. Yeah. yeah. And, or uh, third. It was the third one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we were kind of trying to keep it in the theme of our show, but then from there, we just wanted to continue reading the Ring series. Mm -hmm. Um we read the second book, Spirals, uh, or Singular. Spiral. Yeah. I just see it. Yeah, like that with an S at the end. Maybe <laughs> think that. So Spiral is the second book released in 1995. And then this was made into three movies, kind of. It was kind of, it was really only made, made into, into one, one movie. Yeah, there was one proper Japanese movie called Spiral mm -hmm. that followed the book pretty closely. And it didn't do well. So then they made Ringu 2 in Japan, and then in the U.S. they made uh, The Ring 2, which is not really based on anything. Yeah, it's just a sequel of the American Ring 1. Yeah, and now we're getting even farther from things being connected to the book series because we read the third book in the series, Loop. This one was published in 1998 originally in Japan, translated into English, luckily for us. Uh, and like you said earlier, there's no loop movie, no Japanese adaptation, no U.S. adaptation. Uh, so we decided to watch the movie Rings, Hold on, where'd it go? which is the third American ring movie. Yeah, but it's not the ring three. It's not like, a sequel to the ring two. It's not the character's from those ones uh it's kind of like a reboot in the same universe would you say no that? i would say it is a sequel yeah basically like a direct sequel yeah okay we'll get into that then uh, but first let me just tell you a little bit about the movie released in 2017 directed by f javier gutierrez it stars matilda lutz as julia alex rowe as holt johnny galecki as gabriel and Vincent D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio? Yeah, it's okay. Vincent D'Onofrio. I was hoping you would know yeah. how to say that. Vincent D'Onofrio is Burke, who I recognize from the Daredevil TV show on Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so those are the main cast members. And I... It's connected, but I would say it was like a reboot in the same universe. Why do you say it's a direct sequel? Um, because, um, what they're trying to do, cause they are all, um, yeah, you say it's the same universe because what they're trying to do is investigate, but they're still referring to Samara and all the things that happened yeah. to Samara. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're investigating instead what happened to her mother basically is what it ends up yeah. being. Um, and mm -hmm. like Samara's in it, the ring girl comes out of the, um, the TV in the yeah. same exact way. It's the same ring, um, you know video mm -hmm. um and uh but there's no connection to rachel and her son yeah well there's no connection yeah it's like much further late yeah. it's much later uh mm -hmm. in in real time 
you know, in the and in movie yeah. time, like, like uh, the, the Ring Two is new. from two thousand six or something, maybe. Something like that, yeah. um, so this movie was ten years afterward. You know, it's yeah. a little more in the modern era where it's like there's where computers are more yeah um, they're not copying a VHS the tape. vhs tape they're making a copy on the computer yeah so i took it as like um uh you know at the end of ring two it's like almost kind of put to bed um but then you know the samara yeah. part of it is is kind of tied up a little bit like they she finally... like defeats her in a way yeah rachel does yeah and then and then maybe it was dormant that whole time mm -hmm. and then now somebody else found this video again yeah you know from somewhere and here it is back again um that's, that's how i took it because it's like uh a lot of the same stuff that's, that's going what on, uh but even as you're describing it that's what makes me want to call it a reboot in the same universe but to your point... It's not a reboot, though, if all the other stuff actually happens still. Ah, uh, right? reboot means, like, starting over yeah, from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, okay, maybe it's more of a... It's a rejuvenation. Revitalization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's actually kind of how um, the second book is kind of like that spiral kind of... Um, it's not like a bunch of time has passed, but it's not following directly the same yeah, person. Yeah, it starts with a different main character, you yeah. know, um, which is interesting. And that's what happens in the third book. Yeah, another new main character. <laughs> yeah. Um, since we were talking about the movie, though, yeah. um, just to stay on that for a second, I liked the movie. I liked it. It's kind of my favorite in the ring, all of them, since the first one, probably. Uh, because I feel like it's more faithful to kind of the spirit of the first book. Mm. Um, I like how... You know, it's it's got the mystery aspect. The main character, uh, Julia, she's trying to solve the mystery. Like, first they're trying to not die because they have the seven-day deadline. Mm -hmm. But then she's trying to solve the mystery, what happened to her. Yeah. And it becomes like, oh, you feel bad for Samara. Uh, we need to help her. And she thinks she does that at the end. She's like, I defeated him. I saved yeah. her. Mm -hmm. And then at the very end, the twist ending is like, wait, why is she still coming after us? Yeah. Oh, she's just evil and wants revenge yeah. on humanity. Which is true to the book. Yeah. Yeah. So I liked how just the overall arc of it, how it turned out. I thought, oh, yeah, they kind of captured what the first book was going for. Mm. I didn't like the movie. You didn't like it? I didn't like it. Ah. I didn't like it at all. There are two things I did like about it. The, the premise that um, the video would get out and people would try to study it like that yeah that was interesting <laughs> that was interesting the idea is interesting that's, yeah. that's what i'm getting at it, this movie has interesting ideas and the end of it was good that was a good end yeah. that kind of brought me back into it and like woke me up out of like i was like wanting to fall asleep <laughs> during this movie i think it was executed poorly yeah. very poorly um just like boring and and too similar to the first ring movie it's almost exactly the same type of That's investigation right. path including yeah. them going and interviewing someone related to who they're looking at like they're looking into yeah. samara's something that happened to samara's mother birth mother in this movie and they come across vincent d'onofrio's character an old white guy who has something some yeah. relation to this mystery who seems good at first and then later they come back to him and he has something that you know he hid from them or was bad right and that happens in the first movie that's true that's the exact point. same thing it is and i'm like exactly what the heck it, it, it was it was almost kind of too lazy it was like yeah. they had good ideas but they didn't put it <laughs> together well that's what I would say. Like, That's, they had a good yeah. beginning premise, and they had their ending, and they couldn't figure out a middle. They just did the same stuff in the middle. Yeah. That's why I didn't That's like what it. makes it seem like a reboot, too. They're yeah. like, let's just try to do the first one again, see if it catches on. I yeah, don't but know. you can't do it the first one again and do for. it, like, the same way you just yeah. did it, you know? Yeah, one part I thought was a little bit silly was, um, even in the first American one, it's like, the mystery is kind of downplayed and it's just like visions from they did that yeah they did the, the same thing, thing. Yeah. all throughout the american movies and even the japanese movie yeah. like they did things where like characters figure things out by just having visions about it yeah which is not a like thing that. from the books no because uh the one of the most interesting parts of the first book is how they figure out 
the blinking, how it cuts out. I know that's so it's so good. That's <laughs> why, why like that? um, uh, we have another video that I think by now might it might or may not be out. We have a a spoiler alert to that. Yeah. I think they should remake the Ring the first series one, yeah. movies. They really should because it's so interesting. The tape, the way they describe the tape in the first book is more interesting. Yeah. And then, yeah, the it's cutting to black periodically. And they do some math to figure out that's the average time a female adult human yeah. blinks. Mm-hmm. So then you know it's from uh, her point of view. And Sadako in the book. Uh, and, yeah, they totally leave it out of all of the movies. And I even thought of it when watching this one. Uh, you see Samara in the tape. And it just always reminds me, like, you shouldn't be able to see her in the tape. Yeah, because it's, it's from her, her point visions. of view. Yeah. Uh, and there's a part where, like, the bird from the tape, uh, she, like, sees it in the road. And then she tries to uh-huh. walk out to the bird and almost gets hit by a car. And I'm like, okay, what are they just doing Final Destination now? That's exactly what I have on, like, why yeah. it's bad. It's like, they're just trying to be Final Destination. <laughs> but it's, it was 2017. They did it, like, 15 years too late for yeah. the type of movies that they made during that time and i don't think those final destination movies hold up past being like a teenager and there's mm. like some kind of like shock factor about the whole thing yeah. i don't think they're as good anymore if you go back and watch them i see, i still think the concept is interesting a final destination they're yeah they're kind of an they're excuse cheesy, for gratuitous you know? like death scenes yeah but the idea of, like, can you cheat fate is an interesting concept. Right. So, but... same thing to this movie. I think it's, yeah. like, interesting concept. It could be done better. For sure. For sure. For sure. That's fair. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about the book, then? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Loop is the third one. And I have mixed feelings about it. Same. Similar. Yeah. Yeah. I because, uh, like you already said, it starts with a different main character. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting from the beginning. It's like a kid who's interested in science and he's talking to his dad a lot. Um, and the biggest like plot concept that gets explored is about virtual reality, simulated life. And I have mixed feelings about it because you find out that basically the first two books happened in the virtual world. Yeah. So they're not real. Mm-hmm. So on one hand, that's kind of like three books later, you wake up and it's a dream. dream. Yeah, that's just like one of the worst plot devices you could ever do. (laughs) But on the other hand, it was the most interesting exploration of like simulated life, virtual reality that I've ever read. Yeah, well, and because the interesting part is that Sadako, like ring virus, gets out of the simulation into the real world. world. Right. Uh-huh. And it, it's done in an interesting way. So like I forgive it like almost completely because of that. Like and I wasn't expecting it at all. That's why yeah. it also to me was still like when it learned that I was like, what? You know? Yeah, what it's heck? not. It was all. a Yeah. You know. <laughs> it, and it doesn't really erase the first two books. It does no, it, actually explain yeah. it uh-huh. because they it goes in to answer lingering questions of like, what is she like? How does she have these powers? Well, Somebody inserted it into the virtual reality. And, uh, you know, I've heard the uh, conspiracy theory before, whatever you want to call it. The idea, like, how do we know we're not living in a simulation? Mm -hmm. And I always thought, oh, that's a silly, like, just idea that's fun to think about. Uh, But I always thought the explanations are kind of just, I don't know, they're not interesting. I didn't think it'd be explored in an interesting way other than like the matrix is a good movie but this book came out before the matrix i looked it up Mm -hmm. uh like one year before the matrix he did it first um but yeah the way it explores it made me think more than any theory of the do we live in a virtual reality made me think because it talks about there is a real human universe and they made the loop simulation Mm -hmm. as a way to create life and study how evolution happens. Mm -hmm. And it just happened to like basically mirror our world and how we evolved and like, what are the chances? And then the idea of like, they can feel us watching them. Like when he eventually goes in there and he can look up at the sky Mm -hmm. 
But then that makes him think like, okay, back in my real world, is our idea of God really someone that created mm-hmm. the simulation that we're in? Uh, I don't know. It's an interesting concept mm-hmm. about that loop. So I, it fits into the ring universe in an interesting way. Yeah, and I thought, um, you know, uh, up until like the point where he's starting to figure it out, um, it's, you know, true to the idea of the other ones the investigation and Mm. and and, you know figuring out things logically and it's it's the mystery is really interesting in that Mm. part the part that i'm mixed about is the like second half of it you know like when he goes to the desert and goes on his vision quest or whatever that i call it and then you know that that whole part is not the strength of this book Mm. like um i don't know it's like maybe as a i haven't read anything else that Koji Suzuki has done. Maybe his strength mm. is in the mystery with some science stuff. And that part mm. veers mm. away from that. And I kind of, that's not what I'm here for. I um, see. What did you feel about, uh, it's kind of in the middle when he goes inside the simulation and he like lives the life of the native American. Yeah. Person? I mean, it just, it seemed out of place, even you know, part, in the yeah. story, you know, it yeah. just seemed like it belonged to some different story. You know, and like, Mm -hmm. I understand it, like in a way, and it's sort of interesting. It's just, I guess not what I was looking, it was not what would have been the ideal part of of this story for me. Um, Yeah, it, it made me want to keep going and read the next one. I kind of agree with you, especially after that, when he's just in the desert and the rainstorm happens and everything. And it felt kind of like the deus ex machina thing of when the helicopter shows up and picks him up Mm. um just the plot device of like okay i don't know what's happening let's have someone come in and (laughs) save him and then it's like a guy that's going to explain everything to him (laughs) you know like like you're saying the mystery's gone it's like okay i don't know how to make the connection this guy was trying to draw him there the whole time you know kind of thing where it's it's like all right you know yeah um but yeah uh, but it is, you know, uh, there's enough interesting things in here that I'd still really liked it. You know, the idea that he's a clone of, um, uh, what's his name? The guy's uh, friend. R- r- uh, it's Ryuji, yeah? Yeah, Ryuji. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the main character's friend from the first one. Yeah. Who is kind of like a... I don't know what to call him. He has an interesting philosophy <laughs> of wanting to be at the end of the world and witnessing it. <laughs> And then in the second book, in Spiral, he's like teams up with uh, Sadako uh, to like have his continue his life. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the creator of the simulated universe plucks him out, right? He's like, we can learn from this guy. Yeah, isn't isn't the thing that um, uh, doesn't he call him directly on the I phone really like from the first book? Like, and he hears his own voice, basically, right? We thought, yeah, we, th- or... When when the guy, the main character of this one, like, puts a thing on, he he recognizes his voice in Ryuji. But you're oh, saying... yeah, I'm calls, saying uh, Ryuji calls one of the tech people, that's why yeah. they, you know, are running the simulation, that's how he gets plucked out, is yeah, we thought, yeah. we think at the end of Ring, he's, who he, who he's he might calling be calling, or we, we see that he call. Or we thought he's called Mai, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. Mai Takano. Yeah. yeah. Like that he's trying to call her. Like he figured out the tape finally. Yeah. And he needs to call someone. Yeah. But what he happened was he saw the numbers on the tape is a number. And then he figures out like his idea about God is uh-huh. like it's the creator of the simulated universe. Yeah. And he calls and says, I want to come out. Yeah. Yeah. So that was interesting to me. It was yeah, like, that wow, cool. God. You know, so there's enough of that in there that like. Yeah, that's why... The parts why... I didn't like t- didn't ruin it for me. Yeah, that's the mixed feeling part because it's like, it doesn't erase everything. It's like, oh, it brings back the mystery at the end of the first one where it's yeah. like, now we know who he was calling. Uh, so it's interesting and I'm interested to see where it goes next because there's more. Yeah, the there's more. This is the original trilogy, but um, yeah. there were there are three other books um yep, that I already Fuji suzuki wrote got to follow birthday. this birthday is the next one a book of short stories so there's, there's two other ones there s that? and mm-hmm. tide yeah and i think those ones this one also i think all of those ones have some kind of japanese movie that's related to them awesome. in some way 
um, that continue it on. So um, we've got at least three more Halloweens where we'll do a special yeah. bonus episode on this series. I'm excited. So on that note, I think we should get into our ratings. How do we rate these? Yeah. Um, do you want to start with the book and then the movie? Yeah, we'll do the book first, yeah. Okay. Um, I rated the book an 8 out of 10. Wow, yeah. Pretty yeah, close. Really liked it. Uh, and then I gave the movie a 7 out of 10. Okay. I liked it. Okay. Yeah, I gave the book, like I said, they're uh, pretty close, an 8.2 okay. out of 10. Yeah. So we're similar. an average of 8.1 there. Pretty good. Interesting. Um, and then the movie, I gave a 3.9. <laughs> wow, you really <laughs> That's, did. That's, I think, like my that. lowest score I've given anything on this channel. Wow. Um, that bad. I just couldn't. It was like... So the other... My next lowest score was... The Last Duel, another mm. movie where I was so bored and I was going to fall asleep. This was also yeah. that. It seems so... Like, <sighs> all the Ring movies are, like, in a similar place for me. I know. <laughs> and that's what I thought, like, was going to happen. But as I was watching it, I don't know. Maybe it just yeah. got me at a bad time or yeah. something. But it just really... Maybe I've seen too many Ring movies now. And maybe. I'm just like... Oh, I was enough. going into it kind of expecting that to happen. I was like, Rings? Who even knew they made this? This is going to suck. Yeah. So maybe I had low expectations. <laughs> I was like, oh, not bad. It's kind of like the other ones. I don't think I thought it was going to be good. Yeah. But I thought maybe it would be in the fives. And then yeah. it was worse. You know? <laughs> yeah, so I was so... like, nah, okay. <laughs> it's fair. I've rated yeah. things about that and lower on this channel. So I can't I mean, judge seven, you too much. I think I gave the American Ring a 7.1 or something. So it's like... And I said I like it. I guess that's true. You like yeah, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. As for the books, I liked I liked it better than the second one. Uh, we I to... didn't. We, had, we disagreed there. I liked the yeah. second one better than the first one. And mm -hmm. I think that was because I read it third. I watched two movies and then read that one. So I was a little ring wand out yeah you know? i still like the first book I'd the best the same stories too many times yeah um and i think it was unfair i think it affected that one that's why i then wanted to just mm. read them from that point on yeah so um, with the book yeah i like uh the first book the best and i like loop uh better than spiral but they're all good so yeah yeah and uh speaking of these are good Let's check with some audience and reader ratings to see if these are underrated or overrated. Okay, so I gave the book an 8. You gave it an 8.2. Yeah. That means 8.1 is our combined score. And the readers over on Goodreads give it a 3.54 out mm -hmm. of 5 stars. That's just over a 7. Yeah, so 10. we would say the book is underrated. Yeah, we think it should be rated higher. And I think... More people should read it in general. Yeah. I don't hear anyone talking about the ring books. No, I didn't even know they were books until... I don't remember how we found that out. You found it out, maybe? I think someone commented to Oh, that's right. Channel, it was, right? Uh, that's how we started this whole series. Is yeah. Somebody told us we should do it, and we're like, what? So thank you, yeah, uh, you for commenting it. Yeah, it's an turned into an episode. interesting <laughs> adventure for us. And that just goes to show you, if you ever want us to read a book and watch the movie, we do take suggestions. Sometimes it... Becomes multiple videos. Uh, so yeah, these are underrated, the books. But now let's look at the movie. Because I gave the movie a 7. You gave it a 3.9. 3 That's a 5.45 average rating. Pretty mediocre. And I'm going to look up the Rotten I Tomatoes. Guess it's lower than that. You think 30 <laughs> is what I'm going to guess. They're like 30%. <laughs> you think it's lower than yours? I, yeah. Oh my gosh. Is this the right one? Rings has an 8% critic score. 23 audience score. Yeah, so even, so even audience, audience score is I liked it better than most people. Yeah, than the average <laughs> audience member. Wow, why did I like it so much? I don't know. It's like, I don't know, it's almost the same as the first one. I don't know, one. yeah. I mean, you, like, we've talked about this before. I think in general, you like most movies more than I do. Like, you tend to be pretty forgiving with movies. It's true. Except for... Um, Greg Gatsby. Is that did you rate that one really low? Too? That's my lowest thing. Oh, you that's lower than Interview with a Vampire. Oh, okay, yeah, Interview with a Vampire was the other one you didn't like. Yeah, but those you are both real read. Low. You watched it after you read that book, though. Yeah, if I, yeah, if I have a strong opinion about the book, that'll paint my opinion of the movie. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm easily entertained by movies. Yeah. Yes, it's true. Uh, 
Yeah, man, no good reviews. I'm trying to look through to see if anyone said something good. With the 8% good. and a 23... Oh, there's one. Okay, one person says a screenplay that, well, faulty in spots, felt imaginative, gothic, and paid tribute to the original story in a fresh way. Thank you, C.H. Newell. I agree with you. Uh, but everyone else, the <laughs> critic consensus is Rings may offer ardent fans of the franchise a few threadbare thrills. But for everyone else, it may feel like an endless loop of muddled mythology and rehashed plot points. Yeah. Your opinion, basically. So, I'm a minion. <laughs> Your opinion. I have my opinion, basically. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but we would say it's underrated. It is underrated. <laughs> yeah. We did not give it a strong score, but they really trashed it. Yeah. Okay, so they're both underrated. Check out the Ring series. You know, there's some good stuff in there, especially the books. Yeah. And speaking of books, while you wait for next Halloween, we have a few books of our own that you can check out. We always leave links down in the description where you can order those. And uh, stay tuned for our next season of Adaptation Station. Bye.